Hi, my name is Eric. I'm a, a good friend of Tom Dongo's. Uh, I'm a Bigfoot experiencer uh, and researcher. Oh, okay. Awesome, dude. Do you have you time to talk or are you friend? busy? Yeah, I have full time to talk. Go for it. Uh, you know, uh, that's your, uh, yeah, he kind of briefly told me your experiences that you're having. Can I, uh, you mind if I kind of interview you? Are you cool with that or do you want this to be private? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, uh, what? Can you say where, where, like, you don't tell me exactly your address, but whereabouts oh. are you in Sedona? Like, are you in the city? Are you kind of out on the outskirts near near the Red yeah, Rock? I'm, on, I'm in Village of Oak Creek, and okay. I'm, right on the, I'm right on the edge of the Coconino National Forest. Okay, interesting. All right, well, there you go. So, uh, and how long have you lived there, approximately? Um, I, I've i been here for about, uh, off and on, like, maybe three years, something like that. And when do you think that these uh, uh, experiences started happening? Do you re have a re recollection of, I mean, this oh, recent... Oh, I, I know positively when they started. Okay. Um, it was, uh, I noticed, I, I had my neighbor uh, text message me. I still have that text from her saying, uh, it was around mid-December of uh, 2023. She said, hey, did you hear that screaming last night? And uh, I said, no. And she said, well, you're... Your dog Riley did. He heard it. He barked. And I was like, oh, okay, I didn't ever, I didn't hear anything. So I didn't think anything more of it. But uh, <clears throat> about maybe a couple weeks later, uh, it was raining really hard outside. It was really cold outside. And I started hearing, um, like, oh, what was first? Let me think about this. I started hearing somebody go, whoop, whoop, you know. Whoop, like from different parts of the forest back there and I thought who and it woke me up I was like who in the hell is out in the forest right now whooping it up like that with all these crabby you know retired people like around here I thought that was pretty risky and um and so and it's still pouring rain and then I'm woken up again by a uh, loud sounds like somebody's got a baseball bat and they're hitting the tree the tree trunks like whack you know, and then it whack way back, and then whack, you know. How far, if yeah. you were going to guesstimate, would you say this was within 100 yards, a quarter mile, 50 feet? I mean, uh, what would you think? I would say uh, 50, 50 feet to 30 feet away. And Holy shit, they were back. right there then. Oh, dude. Now, they're coming in my yard every single night. They like to come, come up. I don't know if they have children or something that they let play up on my roof while they're out hunting. But something's up on my roof, too. Like, every single night. It's, and, and it's happening even as we speak, just in the last few days? Uh, last night, I had to call the sheriff. No my shit! Dog, my, my dog was scared out of his wits. I thought he was having a bad dog dream. And he was like, woo, 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 like that, you know? And I thought, God, what, you know, Riley's having a dream, bad dream. So I went in my mom's old room where Riley likes to sleep. Well, now he, he sleeps in there now because I think something's been looking at him through the window in the living room where he usually sleeps. But I went in there and he literally had cow eyes and he was scared to death. He, he wasn't moving. What kind of dog so, is Riley? He is a, a, he's a wolfhound golden retriever. So this is not just some little puppy dog. This is No, a, this... he's not little. And he's not usually afraid of anything. Wow. So, so what did so, I ask? What did you t when you called the police? I'm not laughing. I'm just kind of well, like blowing. Oh, no, you can you can laugh. This the sheriff's department is pretty much a joke. Well, what did you tell them when you called? I'm curious. What what? Did what you I know. I had to. I had to take baby steps because yeah. I go because they're you know the intelligence only goes so far. And I called them up and I said, Hey, so somebody needs to come out. It's 4 a.m. Right? Somebody needs to come out. There. There's a large animal on the on my roof walking around. And I said, I think there might be one in the backyard too. And my dog is scared to death. And I have a huge dog that isn't afraid of anything. I said, so now I'm scared. So, <laughs> so they came over, and I wasn't actually. I was scared, but I'm more like I wanted. I, I want to confront this, you know. I want to, hey, you know, knock it off. And I have leaned my head out the window. I mean, out the door here. I'm a little tired. Sorry about that. Don't worry about um, it. I've, I've laid my head out the door, the back door before, when stuff is going on, like they're grunting and growling and, and whooping a little bit. And I'll go like this. I'll go, hey, get off my roof and be quiet. We need quiet. We're sleeping. We are sleeping right now. 
and I'll go back inside, and I'll be damned if they don't quiet down. Wow. Now, have you heard him in that, that little kind of language? Oh, yes. I've heard that in a female voice, and I've heard that in a male voice. And you, guess what else I've heard? Have you heard the I've babies heard crying? Uh, not baby crying, but at last night, because um, I, I got kind of upset the night, a uh, couple nights ago, and I have this, uh, sometimes when I get, I get too mad when they're making too much noise, I'll flip on every single light outside. And then I'll um, kind of shine a flashlight around. And then this one particular night, they were messing around down by the garage. I could hear them. I think one of them was trying to pull the game cam off the back porch post that I put up to look up on the roof. Wow. Um, have yeah, uh, have you been was, able to get any any kind of images at all on the game? Cam? I, I don't know. I, I don't know on these, new, on these uh, newer game cams that I put up. I just put them up like two days ago. So you haven't pulled them down ago. to look yet? Is that what you're saying? Not not yet, not yet. But um, now, but do, 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 do you live alone, or can you say? Or yeah, you... it's just me and the dog here because my mom passed away. No, if if you, if you were to decide you trust in me, would you allow me to come and, and kind yeah, of? Yeah, okay. get over here. All right. Here. Well, it's, it's going to be say. pouring rain. I'm in California, but it's going to be raining, yeah. as you know, for the next several days. So apparently, the oh, rain's hey. going to end on Thursday, and then it's yeah. going to be sunny for four days. So what I, I'm thinking of doing is. Uh, uh, start driving that way and then maybe yeah. get there by Thursday night or, fr or Friday, okay. but hopefully okay, I yeah. mean they're not gonna go away. I doubt I, uh, They seem to really like me and my Are you do you have any native blood by chance? I do. Okay, that's wild. My my mom is a descendant of Juana Parker No kidding. Wow and mom is yeah. is she passed on or she did pass and it was pretty tragic. Yeah now, do you still have uh, do you have native uh, do you have brothers and sisters that are still alive or do you... uh, I have a sister but she doesn't really get into the the whole you know yeah um, yeah but we but my sister and I are both very sensitive to uh, spirits yeah. that are around and stuff like that I think wow. my mom was too but she just didn't talk about it much right um, and uh, her her mother's sister was very spiritual as well um, but yeah. Now, when you so, kind of yeah. look out the window or you flip the lights, I mean, have you gotten any kind of glimpse of these things or not yet? Uh, uh, there was one time when I was out, before I knew this was going on, I was outside and the deer the deer were walking up to the backyard, back fence, and I go, oh, hey, you guys, you guys want some apples? So I sliced up some apples, giving them some apples, and I noticed they seemed paranoid, like extra paranoid, because it was during the day, and I thought, well, that's weird, because no one's out there, no one ever goes out there. And so they were kind of looking back in the forest and looking back. So then I leaned over the fence and I was kind of looking to see what they were, you know, kind of weird about. And I saw something sort of elongated that was white and black going through the brush really fast. And it would have been crawling on all fours really wow. fast. And I thought, I was like this, I was like, oh, wow. What if that's a Mexican wolf? I thought it was a wolf. You, but you couldn't uh, tell how big it was because it was kind of camouflaged from the bushes? It was, it, it, no, it wasn't that camouflaged. It was, the only reason I saw it because it was white and black, like white on the back and then maybe a black under. under Were you able to see its, its head at all? Not, not clearly, but I could see that it was kind of elongated, which made me go, whoa, is that, was that a wolf? What? What was that? Was it and bigger it than me. what you imagine a wolf to be, or about the size of it? Yeah, it was bigger, bigger than a coyote, and I've seen Mexican wolves, and I would say they would be okay. bigger than a Mexican wolf. Is that normal for your area, for those kind of animals to be out there? Uh, well, it, Game and Fish releases, like, stuff that's endangered out here all the time, so, and I heard that they had released um, Arctic wolves out here before. No kidding. But that, wow. but that, but that was a long time ago. That was like 20 years ago. So Now what about, uh, thought, oh, Tom said that you had uh, cast a footprint. I cast a footprint right outside my back gate here. Yeah, but there's constant footprints here. So really? What, about how many cast. inches are they approximately? Uh, the one that I cast is 14 inches. And how is it pretty wide, like much wider than a human it, print? It, 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 it is pretty wide, but there's some long, thin ones, too. Longer, thinner-looking ones. Wow. It's, and to me, it almost looks like they're walking on the outer edge of their foot sometimes. Um, I don't know if that's to be quieter or, or what it is, but hmm. I can tell you this. Um, I, I'll tell you, I'll go back to when I set the, uh, oh. So they were doing something by the garage. I thought they were trying to take that game cam down, and something was had been messing with it when I looked at it the next morning. But I ran downstairs. It was around two or three in the morning, 
and I set my Jeep alarm off, which is in the garage, and it's loud. So it went off, and it seemed like everybody scattered, right? So then I go out, the dog wants out, the dog's all hyped up. And so I let the dog out, and I walked out there with him. I was shining my flashlight around in the forest, and there was a bunch of orange eyes out there. Like, no shit, like, wow. Like, like peek, peeking out of the bushes, and it seemed like they were cowering a little bit, putting their head down, like, what happened, what happened? They were, they were kind of freaked out. And, now, how uh, far are your neighbors from you? I mean, are they like next door, right next door? Or are they kind of far away from you? Or are you kind of in a... No, they're not that far away from me. They're about maybe 50, 25 feet away. One's 25 feet away. Maybe one of the other one's 50 feet away. Now, but... do you have a conversation with these people? Are they aware of what's happening? Or do they have a clue? Yeah, I, tr I tried to tell uh, one of them uh, who her husband's a German scientist. And she's pretty much a shut-in. And she's afraid of everything. So I told her, I said, hey... Uh, she asked me how I was doing and why I was leaving all my lights on outside all night long, all the time now. And uh, I said, uh, well, because I feel like there's uh, the muggy on Bigfoots running around here. And I said, and I'm fucking scared. I'm like kind of, you know, paranoid a little well, bit. Well, from what I read, the muggy on Bigfoot is not the most friendliest guy in the world. Or those those particular Bigfoot are not. The, you know, we, we, I don't know if you, I'll tell you a story and I'll, and I'll tell you more okay. about it when I see you. But uh Okay. This was about, uh, geez, I'm trying to think when it was, it, uh, three years ago, approximately, two, two, three years, you know, time flies after COVID, it's like everything's a blur, right? Um, right. But my, myself, uh, a guy named John Polk, who lives in uh, Sedona, uh, uh -huh. Arcturus Ra, his name's Renee Swain, and his uh -huh. girlfriend, Christy. Anyway, we were up there at the Happy Jack. I don't know, have you ever been up to Happy Jack? Uh, no, but I've heard about it. Yeah, it's, it's the forest up there. It's uh, the Bogey on Rim. We, we, it's up there. Anyway, so we drove up there to, to because we were told that this there was a spot up there this guy took us to and said this is where Travis Walton was abducted. So I wanted to know. Oh, right? yeah, that's up, that's up in near Snowflake. Right. Yeah. Well, the area this guy took us to turned out was not the area where Travis was taken, but it was about 50 right. miles as the crow flies. But... When we got up there, it was a really cool area because we're on. T we were literally on the on the top of the rim. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, and there's trees all around, and so we're and we're uh, 7,500 feet up. Now the the campground was five miles. We were five miles up the mountain, uh, away from the campground. So we were literally, you know, camping in the BLM land, thinking that, you know, maybe we'll see some UFOs. That was the whole idea. Mm -hmm. And so we're sitting out there. It was about 10:30 at night. And we're, you know, talking and laughing and having a good time. And all of a sudden, we start hearing these noises out of out of the uh, out of the forest. Right. And I had my phone in my hand, and I'm and I'm go, what's that? And this one guy says, that's the Bigfoot. And I says, I said, there's Bigfoot in Arizona. This is what I didn't even realize. That's it. what I said too. That's oh. exactly what I said. Yeah, I was kind of shocked. And then so I would take my, I had my phone, I'd put it on record, and then it, and then it would stop. And so then I would turn off the recorder on my phone because I was like, okay, then whatever. And then it happened three times. And every time I would try to record it, they would stop. Yeah, that's interesting because I have a Wi-Fi security cameras outside my house. Whenever I think that they've passed under that camera and they had to have passed under that ca certain camera because I heard their feet in the gravel or I heard them make a noise or I heard them, you know, whoop or something or make a squeak noise. Um, for some reason, my whole camera system goes down. Wow! So you you so so you can actually know on the timestamp when that goes down. Yeah. Uh, what time? What time is it? All different times, or how many times all is that? Di all, all different times. Oh, they have a schedule for sure. For sure. No they kidding. About what time are they? Are they typically? They, they they start up around eleven, eleven thirty. Sometimes they're out here at night nine. Or something like that, or eight thirty or nine. It's fully dark but, by then, right now, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But eleven thirty is when they start getting started, and then around uh, two, one, two, three, four in the mornings, high activity time. You know, big, big action in my backyard and all around. Anyway. Now there's this, there's this. I uh, did this uh, when I was doing some research. There's this uh, lady name. I think her name's Kathy Strain, if I'm not mistaken. And she, they call them the, uh, it was called the, uh, the Forest Ape uh, uh, Project. They, I mean, they, they get money, they get funding, but they can't call it Bigfoot, so they call it a Forest Ape. Just that's how they, oh. right? Yeah, okay. So anyway, yeah. uh, and they had this program, they had this strategy, because they believed that the Bigfoot were, this was not in Arizona, I forget where it was, it might have been like Oregon or Washington, I can't recall. But... Uh -huh. um, Anyway, so what they did, which was kind of brilliant, is they took, uh, like, fish wire, 
a little real uh -huh. fish line, and they stretched it uh, in seven, seven, excuse me, seven different places uh -huh. uh, around this area. And what they did is they stretched it from one tree to the next, and they put it up about seven feet because uh -huh. they didn't want uh, if something had come across it, they didn't want to worry about you know a bear or a deer. They only they were only thinking that whatever this creature is, if it's over seven feet. And then what they did is they they attached this um, this really small radio uh, transmitter to this wire. Wow. Yeah. This is a true story. It's like a forty-two. I'll, you know what I do when I come up there? I'll 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 bring the uh, I'll send you the link to it. But anyway, okay. uh, so apparently um, the, it's called the paper is called Tag Seven because um. on Tag Number Seven at one point because they were it it was missing. And then they and then they had the radio uh, signal and they couldn't you know. they couldn't find where this the radio uh, tag thing had gone and then all of a sudden I don't know how many days had passed they get a signal and now and now this thing is is moving whatever it was that was attached to this creature is moving now they tracked this thing for eight months and they couldn't what? find it. Wow and it would move from one location like with the seasons. Yeah, and they were driving yeah, around in these little uh, in their in their off road vehicles, and and they were yeah. camping. And they had a bunch of them, and they talked about they would hear the sounds, and the rocks would be thrown at them, yeah. and mm -hmm. the whole nine yards. But the, and then at one point, at the very end, uh, the, I guess they were camping in this one area near a mountain uh, base of a mountain, and they were getting rocks thrown at them. And I guess they just said, "Let's go, let's go." And so they they went in after it. And I, they, I don't think they didn't have video of this, but they believe that this thing climbed up the mountain and went up over the mountain, and then they oh. never after that, whatever that whatever had happened to the tag, it, it, it yeah. either disappeared or fell off. But they lost track of it at that point. Yeah, see, it, it, it's weird. And then the, my thing too is about how mystical these are. Is um, why is it that whenever wherever you have high UFO activity also have Bigfoot. Yeah. I feel like Big, Bigfoot is like the guard dog for these alien projects that are going on. Yeah, it could be. I, I, I do think that, uh, I mean, they could have some sort of alien connection there. I, I, I agree with yeah. the lights. I mean, that's, uh, or or they, they have the ability to cloak or go into like the form of an orb. Uh-huh. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I, saw, I definitely have, like, I, I film my dog or I saw on the video on my security camera, my dog was walking in the side yard during the night. This was a couple nights ago. And as he's walking around the corner, I thought a rock was thrown. And I slowed the video down. And it actually looks like a blurry orb. And it's not even round. It just looks blurry. And it kind of just goes into the fence. But it looks like it's following the dog for a second. Wow. Now, have you actually, <laughs> in the daytime, I know it's been raining, but have you walk you probably don't want to do this alone but have you walked out into the forest to kind of uh, look uh, around uh, when i first heard that tree knocking and the whoop and all that i i i was perplexed the next day and i was like okay what and i googled and i sort of i went on youtube and i, I tapped that typed that in and it was giving me all this bigfoot stuff and i went what arizona and bigfoot just like you and uh so the next day um I went, uh, I hiked up to where I kind of felt like um, a lot of uh, the activity was heading, but I was also looking for broken branches, and I think I found where they were starting to build a, bit, a pretty large nest uh, up there. Were you able to so, take any pictures of this? Or? Yeah, I did. I, I videoed that, and I took pictures of that, and in the video... Now, are you on no social people. media at all, by the way? Uh, no, you know, I used to be, and now I'm not. I don't okay. know why. I well, I look forward out. to seeing your video because I definitely, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I know, I'm actually, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I've seen uh -huh. multiple structures in multiple states. Uh -huh. yeah. I've seen them in Oregon, I've seen them in Washington, I've seen them in California, in Arizona, right. in Montana, right. in Idaho. Uh, right. They're all, and, and you know what is the really where, where they're really crazy is in uh, is in uh, Arkansas where the, uh, the what's the name? Oh. Of, uh, the, what's that creature that the they boggy, the, the, boggy boggy creek the boggy creek monster. Now yeah. I know a guy up there who's who's seen them a couple times, and he he knows they're there because he talks to people about it. They they, they all know they're there. Now we he, he took me on a drive and took me through the areas where they had been sighted. Now we're driving down this road. I've got pictures of this, and I right. can see off the road about maybe uh, 50 yards or so. 
um, a bunch of something. I mean, look, you couldn't really tell clearly what it was, but it looked like it was just animals kind of in, piled up or in a circle or just scattered about in this one area. And it seemed uh -huh. odd to me, so I said, stop, stop the truck. I, what, this seems kind of strange. I want to go out there and take a look at this. Uh -huh, so, yeah, he, he, so I went out there, and there were no less than five different animals. We're talking deer. Uh, we're talking... Uh, anyway, I, I'm kind yeah. of a little tripping right now. I'm just talking about this, but... And they were all <laughs> mutilated, and their heads were torn up, and their bodies and their oh, feet. Oh, that's for sure. Big and their boy, feet yeah. were torn off. Yeah. And they were just all in this one area. And I thought, no human's gonna do this. There's no point right. in this. So it would be like a like a ceremony. And it wasn't a satanic or... sacrifice ritual. I think the Bigfoot out there, just they, you know, that's where they put their kill after they kill them for mm -hmm. some. And or or I think they they do like to make a statement. I think. Yeah. Well, being, maybe there you go. Yeah. For a month, so to that scare could people. Be a statement too. Don't don't come around here. Just look what happened to these guys. Exactly. But yeah. So uh, the reason I think it's, it might be a muggy on Bigfoot a family because um, because of the white hair that I found on the roof. Now I've got a so. picture. Uh, i can I send you a picture on your on your text on your cell phone? Yeah, yeah, sure. That no shows problem. this one Bigfoot that's white and like a brownish black, like a like a two tone. Uh -huh. So oh, I, yeah. I do think that there, you know, you know what? Uh, I went to do some research, uh, Bigfoot research in uh, Taylorsville, California, which is way far northern California in the mountains. And this lady was having the same kind of thing you're talking about in her yeah. in her house up on this hill. And um, there's a a uh, what do they call those things where it's a habitat where the animals you you know you don't you don't mess with the animals it's just that's oh yeah a sanctuary sanctuary like well it yeah. was it was the whole mountain was like okay this is where the, i mean there were bears up there i'd never actually i'd seen a bear once or twice driving down the freeway you know in, or in okay. colorado or whatever but anyway so i was like i drove around that mountain literally all day one day by myself just kind of looking for any kind of evidence of maybe bigfoot and no kidding on that day I saw seven different bears, and all of them were different colors. I saw calico, yeah. I saw a white yeah. bear, I saw a brown bear, I saw a black bear. I mean, it was wild. That and the, yeah, you, you, yeah, it was freaking wild. So, yeah, uh, and then there was a huge fire. I don't know if you know that or not, but there was a huge yeah. fire up there, and it burned out that whole area, which is sad because oh, no. it kind of ruined our research area because I was planning to go back there. Now, now, also, right. I'll go on Google Earth sometimes, and I'll look for structures. And there's uh -huh. this, there's a couple areas that were on this mountain. When you go on Google Earth, everything is clear except they have these little patches that they blur out. Oh, really? Yes, uh, I'll show that to you too when I see. So, so I don't know. I think that there's people. I don't know if it's the government, but whoever it is, they're. They obviously don't want us to know about this and look into it. Uh, you know. Yeah, I, I talked to the Forest Service like a couple, like just the other day. I talked to them. I said, "Hey, you know, so I've got some big animal on my property. This and that. What do I do?" And 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 we got we started talking about Bigfoot and stuff like that. Well, and and, and I didn't really tell them. I think I have Bigfoot, but they were kind of like I said. So I heard you're, you guys aren't supposed to talk about Bigfoot. And they go, "Well, we." We can, if someone comes in and talk, wants to talk about Bigfoot, we can listen to them, but we can't really talk about it with them. That's what they said. They literally said that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And uh, here's the deal here. Um, I'll tell you, I'll finish this story with yeah, you. Yeah. Sorry. I keep, no, take your I'm, time. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So, uh, this, so I set the Jeep alarm off. It seemed like they scattered. Then I saw the red uh, uh, eyes out before us a little bit. Then I crashed out again because it got real quiet after that. So then the next night, there's um there's a like a high not a higher pitch but almost like a female voice and it's kind of going it's in the bushes like um uh near my my bedroom and i'm hearing kind of like uh kind of like a like that almost like almost like they're trying to say hey we're sorry we made so much noise is it okay if we play here again you know what i mean it's wow. not what it felt like to me wow. but i don't know it could also also, I can take it as it's trying to entice me to go outside because it wants to grab me or something or grab my dog or something. So, I don't know. I take it both ways. So. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I, I think that uh, it, my, ex my research and experience has taught me that the native people are almost like magnets for these some of these phenomenon uh, for whatever <laughs> reason. 
you probably yeah, know that. Yeah, that's what. I did not know that, but uh, my friend, my friends have definitely been saying in Santa. I, I was in Santa Barbara for a long time. I had a lot of friends there. And uh, oh, I'm like an hour away from Santa Barbara, where I live, actually. Yeah. I'm on the Pismo yeah. Beach uh, coast area. Oh yeah, that's really cool there. I've been there a lot. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they always say you're a magnet for paranormal UFOs, and now this. So, yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, it, do me a favor. You've got my number. Uh, you you can literally call me, and I'd like you to call okay. me anytime. Okay. If something okay. happens, yeah, just just call me and say, hey, you know, this okay. is happening right now. Yeah, and I'll put you on speakerphone. So Absolutely, you know and I don't care yeah. if it's one o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'll just right. just call me or whatever. And the other thing is, when I come out there, if you want, we'll go out and we'll tie up uh, some of these uh, real thin uh, mm -hmm. fish fish line. And, uh -huh. and we'll we'll see if the fish line is is moved or broken then we'll uh -huh. know there we'll I mean I believe you already I don't need proof but yeah. I, I but we can yeah. at least have evidence even further evidence that they're moving around out there because uh, and that might also keep them you know would be interesting is uh, if it keeps them from coming onto your property because they, they uh -huh. might recognize that there is fish line or they might not uh -huh. So if you're open to that, we can set that up in a few strategic areas and figure out a way to kind of, uh, you know what I'm saying? We'll we'll see. However, it's you, right. your deal, but I'll I'll be happy right. to. But yeah, that, I mean that'll be a trip if if this continues. I mean that'll be. Yeah, and, and here's the deal. I know I've seen nests uh, up on. There's a, a mountain called House Mountain, which is directly behind us here. Also, how do you and how do you old, spell that? House, 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 just like house. Oh, house mountain. mountain. Okay, gotcha. House mountain, and there's it's an old volcano. So it's. Oh, you're volcano. kidding me! Oh, there you go. No. Oh my yeah. God, that's totally. In my opinion, that's where they're they're at. That's how <laughs> yeah. far a hike is I, that from your house? I, it's pretty. It's a pretty steep hike, but uh, yeah, it's I can. But people don't normally go up there, I assume. This is one of those kind of hikes. Not at all. Oh, my God. People around here, they stay in their house all the time. Yeah, I so. get it. I get it. Wow. That's crazy. So yeah. what you got going on today? Are you just kind of chilling out? or? Yeah, I'm chilling out. I was kind of <laughs> up and down all night with my Yeti friends. Wow. So, um, so, so do you I need anything? Are you good as far as, I mean, is there, if, when I come, is, is there anything, if there's uh, anything you need me well, to bring you, you or whatever, I'm, you know. If you, if you have a good thermal imaging camera. I do. I have uh, a, uh, I have a night vision, uh, $3,000 night vision uh, binoculars too. Oh my God. That, you'll be able to see them walking around. Yeah. Here. Yeah. That's and cool. And my buddy, my buddy Adam has a uh, drone with a, uh, a IR on it. So Wow. Well, they'll probably so, hide yeah. from the drones, but if we're sitting in your house or if I'm just sitting in the bedroom looking out the window with the night vision, uh -huh. I might be able to see them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, or just sit on on the backboards. Yeah, well, I, I love it. Uh, uh, you know, and and they they do they are attracted to uh, from what I could tell, people talking and, and having fun and conversation and laughter and, uh -huh. and for some reason they're attracted to that. So, yeah, um, I mean, we could even put a recording out there of kids playing, like the sounds of kids laughing uh -huh. and talking, and just leave uh -huh. it sit out there and play, and that might attract uh -huh. them because they for whatever yeah. reason they're attracted to that. They're attracted to kids and stuff. I kind of got that. The guy across the street is back home. He goes on vacations a lot, but he's back home with his little kids. And I, they were outside in the backyard playing kind of late the other night. And I kind of got the feeling they weren't as active in my backyard. They were probably over there, like, watching the kids. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, um, they, uh, they are very territorial, dude. Very territorial. So they could be... They could start throwing rocks a little bit, you know, if, when you're here, because they're like, who's that? Um, so I may, like, go, hey, it's my friend Eric. He's a friend. He's a friend of yours. He's a friend of mine. Let's be, you know, nice. Yeah, there you go. Like, it's almost like they understand. Oh, they do. These, uh, these beings are very intelligent. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, uh, in my yeah. opinion, they're, uh, they're, they're, their consciousness is at a higher level than ours even, probably. Yeah, it's pretty but, trippy. Yeah, I, I totally think they're related to the aliens, for sure. I think they're hybrids. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they, they might be hybrids from the race that came here to Earth and then hybridize humans. Mm -hmm. And it's possible that what they... This is speculation. That uh, if, there, what, if there were bears or gorillas or whatever that they altered the genetics of those creatures and added wow. you know, their own form of genetics and these Bigfoot were, were created 
through yeah. some sort of hybridization program. I mean, you know, For we're sure. we're hybrids too. I mean, the, the in my opinion, the Indian people are more the, the they're more pure hybrid than even like I'm a Caucasian white guy, but but that's why you guys have more connection to this to the phenomenon is you're more your genetics are more directly linked to this phenomenon in my opinion yeah i never ever thought about putting the native american blood into that whole into this whole equation that's really interesting wow do you know what your uh, what your blood type is or uh i think it's rare um it's one of those rare ones. It could it be, I you don't know, know if it's RH or O plus or anything, you're not sure? Yeah, I'm not sure, but I remember getting my blood tested one time. And they said, oh, hey, you have that rare, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, well, that sucks. Well, that's it. I no, ever transfusion. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, I remember that, but uh, wow. I'm not sure. I should get it tested again. Yeah, uh, find out, what, well, if you feel like it, find out what you are, because if you are RH negative, or I think it's either O plus or O minus, those are markers for uh, you know, more of a, a direct a lineage to this sort of thing, we'll say. Oh, wow. Wow. See, I didn't put that together either. What a trip. Yeah. Oh, crazy. Well, yeah, like I said, uh, you, you have total permission. You, 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 I don't care if you call me three times a day. If yeah. anything happens... You yeah. call me, you know, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm asking you, please, you know. Call. No, no, I, I'm down for it, man. I, we have to document this. Oh, we are, will. Are, I mean, so, uh, now I'm thinking so I'm going to I'm gonna look at the weather even closer to see if I can get there sooner. What is, today's yeah. Monday, right? So Tuesday. Well, let me tell you this. Uh, they love when it rains. They are, it's like, I don't know. It's kind of like we had horses before, and whenever it stormed and rained, when the horses were in the corral, the horses would start bucking around and getting all crazy and stuff. Um. It's hmm. almost like these guys do that too. I wonder what it is about the rain that that they love. I, I don't know. Maybe because the uh, stream that's back there starts flowing. Oh, I have a, a pond in my backyard too, so that I could be a water source for them as well. There you go. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right, Becky. Well, I'm gonna let you go, and uh, yeah. Okay. And if I don't hear from you today, I'll probably call you tomorrow just to get an update. But like I said, if anything happens, please call me immediately. Okay, Eric. No problem. All right. I look forward to meeting you. Take care hey, of yourself. No awesome. Okay, All right. Bye-bye.